Right. So under Unit 10, we have to study six countries. First things first, you need to know what are the six countries we have to study. Okay. We have to study USA. That's the first country we study. Then you study India. Then you study Switzerland. Okay. Then you study United Kingdom or Great Britain. The book refers, the teacher's guide refers to it as uh, Great Britain, but the most accurate term is United Kingdom. Then um, Sri Lanka, none other than our own Sri Lanka. And of course, finally, we study France. You can see that I left a space between three and four. Let's start with the small basics. Start with the basics, shall we? What is the line that I've drawn here? What differentiates these three countries from the countries, three countries below? Anyone? What is the classification here? Unitary and federal? Yes, unitary and federal. That is the difference here. Okay. So, countries on top are unitary countries. Countries on bottom are federal countries. Okay. All right. Then, um, that is the first thing you understand. You have to study three unitary countries and three federal countries. Then there are differences in between. As you can see, there's first country and the second country. USA and India, of course, India, we sort of call them semi-federal. That's a different story. Other than that, USA and India are like federal countries, like typical federal countries. Okay? While Switzerland is unique in their own way. What is the word we use for Switzerland? Anyone remember? What is the model they have? Confederate. They are a confederate, correct. Right? Switzerland is a country that is sort of like um, going towards federalism from confederate. They, are, they were established as a confederate. Now they are going towards federalism, but the point is they are a little beyond a federal system. While USA and India, they fall within the unitary, uh, sorry, they fall within the federal format. While Switzerland is a little beyond that. Okay, that's Switzerland. Same can be applied for these three below countries. Now we know that these three are unitary, but what are the other differences? These two countries, four and five, they are not typically unitary anymore. Why? They are unitary, but inside unitary, they have tried something. What have they tried? Devolution. Devolution of powers. UK and Sri Lanka are two countries. We are not like, like so extremely unitary anymore. We both have introduced devolution to our countries. Okay. Meanwhile, France is a little different. Why? France does not have devolution of powers. Instead, they have. Instead, they have decentralization. Now you need to know Unit Four to understand this. Okay. Unit Four, the first part. Now, after today's lesson, if you aren't very, if you are a little sketchy with Unit 4, the first part, Unitary Federal, Semi-Federal Confederates, please go and watch that video. If you can't find that video, ask me, I will send you the link. Go watch it and come next week. Okay? Because if not, you won't get the full hang of it. Okay? 
Right. So first we divided these six countries. We are studying three federal countries and three unitary countries. Federal countries also we saw, okay, we have like two standard federal countries while one country is a confederate, right? And we have two unitary countries that are sort of like have been applying devolution while France, you have France, it doesn't have devolution. They have decentralization, which is like an authentic unitary country. Inside these boxes also, there is a small difference. Okay. Now, you know, the top two countries, USA and India, both these countries are federal. That means they have regional governmental units. Okay. Under you have UK and Sri Lanka, that is also inside a box. In this country also, although we are unitary, we have applied devolution of powers. That means we also have, in these two countries, we also have regional governments. The only difference in USA and India, the regional governments share the sovereign power because it's a federal country. While in Sri Lanka and UK, the regional governments don't share the sovereign power because we are still unitary. Okay. Right. So... How are these powers divided? Now, it is a fact that both, like both boxes, USA, India, United Kingdom and Sri Lanka, both, we all have regional government. It's just in USA and India, the regional governments are independent. Sri Lanka and UK, no, because we are united. Okay. But the difference is, how are the powers divided? We can notice that USA, USA has divided their powers. Let me get a different color. USA has divided their powers in parallel lines. Okay. Every state getting the same level of powers while India is asymmetric. Different states have different levels of powers. USA is a symmetrical federal country, while India is an asymmetrical country, asymmetrical federal country. Same goes to UK and Sri Lanka. Now, both are, both are countries. We are unitary, but we have used devolution, so there are regional governmental units which are controlled by the central government. Right? But the point is in Sri Lanka, every provincial council is given equal powers. Symmetrical. It's all symmetrical. Okay. While UK, not so much. In UK, their governmental units have different, different layers of levels of powers asymmetrical power sharing okay so this can be a short note for you to have a basic idea of each of these countries literally this part itself shall be enough for you to pass okay shall be enough for you to pass this question, get through this question, understand. Basic knowledge, this is all you need to know. You have three federal countries, three unitary countries. Out of the federal countries, two of them are uh, standard federal, while one of them is a confederate. Out of the three unitary countries, two of them are applying devolution, uh, while the other country is not applying devolution. They are like uh, typically unitary. While the two federal countries we are studying, one of them has symmetrical power sharing, other one has asymmetrical power sharing. And the two devolution countries we study also, unitary countries, UK has asymmetrical devolution, while Sri Lanka has symmetrical devolution. So either you take a screenshot or you draw this yourself. I recommend if you draw this yourself, because let's face it, you take a screenshot, you are not going to even look at it ever again. Those friends who take photographs and send the notes, you never look at them, right? The, the voice recordings of classes, when you miss, you tell a friend to record that you never listen to them. 
screenshots of these articles you take, you never look at them, right? So at least just draw this by hand using different colored pens if you have, at least that will go to your brains, okay? I'll give you a couple of minutes. Just let this sink in, okay? Right, so let's see how powers are divided in these countries in, in various ways, okay? First of all, you have USA. Now, what you need to know about USA is USA is typically a federal country. USA was also started off as a confederate. At one point, USA was started off as a confederate, right? And later, it turned into a federal country. Now, it turned into a federal country quite a while ago, so it's no longer... Uh, looks a confederate at all. It, it looks typically a federal system. Okay. Um, while USA has a very advanced federal system, right? They have a very advanced federal system, which means that the states are powerful. States are powerful. Now, this is a key thing that you need to know that in USA, states are powerful. That doesn't mean the central government is weak. The central government also powerful. How does that work? How can the central government and the states both be powerful inside the same system? That's because in USA, they, they have a clear division of powers. They have a clear division of powers, right? And whatever the powers the states get, they are very powerful in terms of their powers, those powers. The central government can't get involved. Whatever the powers that are given to the central government, the state is the central government, the states can't get involved. The central government is powerful in those. Okay. So, how are the powers divided? Now, you know, in India, we saw yesterday in provincial councils of Sri Lanka, they use the same system that they use in India using three lists. USA doesn't have that. USA has a very simple system. What do they do? In USA, they have one list only. They don't have three lists. Saying central government's list, state's list, mutual list, no, no, nothing. There's just one list. What is that one list? State. States. What are the powers of the states? Okay. They have one list. Sorry, 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 sorry. Correction, mistake. They have one list that is the central government list. What does that mean? They have a list in their constitution. They don't have three lists saying central government, states, mutual. No, no. There is only one list that is the central government list. How do you divide powers then? Whatever the powers that are included in this list are given to central government. Everything else? There is a word for that. Residual powers. All the residual powers are given to states. There is one list that mentions what are the powers of the central government. All remaining powers, everything is given to states. Understand? Simple as that. One more thing you need to know about USA, we discussed this before. They have symmetrical power sharing, which means all the states get the same level of powers. Okay. Now, when we get into these, we'll see like in detail, like there's much more details in this. I'm just giving you a summary. Okay. This is what you need to know about the USA. Then, When you take India, what happens in India? Now, first of all, we saw that India is a country that has, they don't specify whether they are unitary or federal. They don't specify they are countries unitary or federal, which is why that we have to sort of like come up with the idea that they are semi-federal. That's what we use. Okay. 
but for the sake of the lesson, we consider them as a federal country. After all, they have regional governments, right? So we consider them to be, a, it's, a, it's a question whether India is a unitary country with federal features or it, is it a federal country with unitary features? Here we are going with the assumption it is a federal country with some unitary features. This is a question like, you know, which came first, whether the hen or the egg? Or, or the question whether whether the zebra is a black animal with white stripes or a white animal with black stripes, right? So people keep arguing. For you all, for your generation, something that can be more relatable is like, this is like whether that dress is blue and gold or white and black, or whether that, that word says laurel or what's the other word? There's a word that hears in two ways. Some people hear that as laurel, other people hear that as. So that, that's on, that, was, that was on TikTok and Instagram everywhere. Anyway, so it's like a age old debate, or is it like whether Messi or Ronaldo, who's a better footballer, or it's like whether it's pronounced GIF or a GIF, like that, okay? So here's another argument, whether it's a federal country with unitary features or it is a unitary country with some federal features. Political scientists actually disagree on that, but in this unit, we go with the first assumption, we consider it as a federal country. So speaking this as a federal country, like in, in this system, uh, state central government is very powerful, right? Central government pretty much dominates the system, which is why that we have to use the term semi-federal, right? Because some unitary features are, are, are there, central government is very powerful. So India is not considered as an advanced federal system. They are considered as a weak federal system. India is considered as a weak federal system. And also they have asymmetrical power sharing. Different states get different levels of power. Also, another important thing is how powers are divided in India, right? In India, powers are divided in a way that you have three lists, right? Central government list, states list, and mutual list. Whoever's present in yesterday's class, you all know this is the same system we have in our provincial council because India was the one that forced that on us, right? So, one list says what are the powers of the central government, another list says what are the powers of the states, and there's another list that says what are the powers that both governments can do mutually. Whatever any residual powers, any remaining powers that are not mentioned any any of the, any of the lists, where do they go? Residual powers go to central government. Okay. Right. Then looking at Switzerland. As I told you, Switzerland is different. It's they have a unique system. So much so that you take the Swiss system or the, the question paper may say Swiss or Switzerland, one of the two is the same thing. Okay. So in the Swiss system, what they have is a confederate. Right? Confederate. So what happens in a confederate? They are, states are powerful. The central government is weak. I'm not going to explain why. I have explained this with many examples when I was teaching Unit 4. If you don't remember, go watch the video on YouTube. Um, it's weak because you know this is similar to like the children adopting a father rather than the father adopting children. This is like a bunch of uh, orphans going and taking a father, and you know, then the father has limited powers because he came later. That's the idea. So central government is relatively weak in Switzerland. That's how it works. States are running the system. One of the important things is in Switzerland, they don't use the word state, but they have a special word, which is unique to Switzerland. Cantons. They use the word cantons instead of states. Okay. 
So in Switzerland, cantons are the ones who run the show. Okay. In Switzerland, it is the cantons that's powerful. Okay. So much so, cantons can govern themselves. Now, okay, think about USA. USA is how it works, right? USA states and central government both are powerful. How was that? States can control themselves. Don't get confused. I'm, this is I'm talking about uh, USA. Okay, I'm comparing it with USA. In the okay, I'll put that so you won't get confused. So in USA, what happens is states can control themselves. Central government can control itself. They both get their own autonomy in their area. But what happens in Switzerland is states can control themselves. Okay. Also, states can control the central government. Understand? This is why in Switzerland you call it a confederation, and also we don't use the word states. What do we use? Cantons. So cantons can control themselves, right? And cantons can control the central government as well. Okay. So these two powers are known with. First, uh, like two special names. These are the things they ask for. Short, short questions, right? What is the power that allows cantons to control themselves? Self-rule. What is the power that allows the central, uh, uh, the central government to be governed? What is the power that allows canton to control the central government? Shared rule. Understand. Self rule, shared rule. Self rule, shared rule. Okay. These are the two important words. Why do you call it self rule? Every canton has the power to control itself. Shared means the cantons can control the central government like then that power is shared by all the cantons cantons can get together and they can control the central government understand other than that another important thing you need to know is the swiss people take their constitution very serious right they take their constitution very serious they took them like nearly 150 50 years to finally finish that constitution they take that very serious. So, constitutional amendment is a very important area. How important is this? Every constitutional amendment requires a referendum. You remember in Sri Lanka how some of the provisions, some of the articles only require referendum. No, in whatever, if you want to change a single word in the uh, Swiss constitution, you need a referendum. Okay. Not only that. Okay. Not only that. There is another thing. Imagine a government brings a referendum. Sorry, a government brings a constitutional amendment. A government brings a constitutional amendment and the referendum, it loses. People disagree with the referendum. The government is dissolved. The government is dissolved. Because they take the amendment that serious. If the government was trying to amend the constitution, people disagreed that the government has no right to stay anymore. So they take it that serious and referendums are very frequent in Switzerland. All right. Okay. I hope you took down notes and you have somewhat of an idea about those three. Then let's take a small break, three minutes break, and we'll proceed with um, the other three unitary countries, okay? 
Now we have discussed three countries, the three federal countries that we have. Let's move on to the unitary countries. Now the unitary countries are less complex than the federal ones, obviously, right? So the first country we have to study is United Kingdom. Or as the teacher's guide say, Great Britain, but which is not uh, sorry, <laughs> great. Oh. Great. Okay. Great. Britain. So in fact, the accurate way of mentioning this, accurate way of saying this is uh, United Kingdom, because, uh, okay, I'll explain why, why that means. Uh, <clears throat> in fact, Great Britain is not entirely accurate, so United Kingdom is the accurate one, but you won't lose marks for writing Great Britain in the exam if you write that way. Okay, so United Kingdom is a country that is unitary, okay? Unity means they don't share sovereign power. But of course, they have applied devolution. Right? They have applied, uh, they have applied, uh, applied devolution of power. So under devolution of power, um, they have divided power to um, different parts of the United Kingdom. So how is the United Kingdom made? So you guys, of course, know England. England is the main country. England is where that the United Kingdom is ran from. So England had two parts. One was uh, Scotland, which was at one point a separate country, but separate kingdom. But it was like uh, sort of then merged with England. And then there was another country called Wales. Wales was also at one point they were functioning separate but they are also working together with England. So at one point, Ireland. Ireland was also taken by uh, them, uh, but then Ireland actually fought for their independence, whereas I, uh, there was a split opinion between Irish people whether to stay with these guys or go separate as their own country. So what happened was that Ireland, the other, like the Northern Ireland people said, you know what, we are okay with staying with uh, the UK, while the rest of the island became an independent country. So this island is known as the Republic of Ireland. It's what we call Republic of Ireland. But the northern part is st still working with, um, is with these three countries. So uh, this is what you know, know as the United Kingdom, right? Northern Ireland, Wales, and England. Okay. This is what you know as United Kingdom. The reason you don't say Great Britain, when you say Great Britain, it doesn't count Northern Ireland. It counts England, Scotland, and Wales, which is why Great Britain is inaccurate. It's actually United Kingdom, where you count Northern Ireland as well. So England is the country that runs the system, while Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland are the regional governments that they have. And these three governments have been given power through the through a parliamentary act, right? You know, in unitary countries, when you apply devolution, you don't put that in the constitution. You don't give powers from the fundamental law of the country. You give powers from the general law of the country. So parliamentary acts have been passed, like saying 1998 Scotland Act, 1998 Wales Act, 1998 Northern Ireland Act. Republic of Ireland, it doesn't matter to us anymore. They are a separate country. Okay. So the thing is, they are unitary and they follow asymmetrical power sharing. Asymmetrical power sharing. That's because these countries have different interest levels about power. Now, for example, Scotland has been that one country that has been fighting for so long, saying that they want autonomy. Scotland have been fighting, if you guys have seen a movie called Braveheart, that's about uh, the Scottish freedom fighters. 
in ancient times. So since feudalist times, Scotland was fighting for their freedom. Okay. So Scotland have been quite intense about their independence. So they have given large amount of power. Okay. Wales, not so much. Wales people don't really care much. They are sort of okay being a part of the UK. So they are given a small amount of powers. Northern Ireland, somewhere in between. They are sort of like interested in taking power, but they are not that intense. They are the Scottish people. So they are given medium. These look like t-shirt sizes, large, small, medium. But that's how it is going. It is asymmetrical, where Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, they receive different levels of power. Okay. So what normally happens is like at one point, all these countries were given a, a national assembly. That's what they call them. That's what they call them. They were given a national. Scotland had the Scottish National Assembly. So they had the Scottish National Assembly. While the Welsh people had Welsh National Assembly. And then they were given the Northern Ireland National Assembly. So then what happened was because Scotland people was like fighting, fighting, fighting. They said, no, we don't, we don't, we want something better than a national assembly. So their national assembly was promoted to a parliament. Right? So what they have is the Scottish parliament now. They have the Scottish parliament. Okay. It's a regional parliament. It doesn't have the powers of the parliament of England. Obviously, parliament of the England is what we call the British parliament. That's where all the powers are there, right? This is where everything, this is where you pass, uh, whatever you pass in this, you pass a act in the parliament in England and you give powers to these, right? So uh, this is a regional parliament. They don't have all that power. This is like a provincial council in Sri Lanka, okay? Then eventually, uh, Northern Ireland also wanted uh, a national assembly. Uh, they also wanted a parliament. So, Northern Ireland parliament also exists. Okay. That, all, that also exists, just like Scotland. Northern Ireland was also promoted. Their national assembly was also promoted to a parliament. While Welsh people didn't care much, so Wales, Wales still has a national assembly. They don't have a parliament there. All right. This is what you need to know about United Kingdom. Now, moving on to Sri Lanka. Now, first of all, if you have studied 13th Amendment under the 12th unit, this is going to be for Sri Lanka, this is going to be a piece of cake. This is just overlooking what sort of power Sri Lanka has. We've already studied that very thoroughly under unit 12. Okay. Sri Lanka is also a unitary country, and we have also applied devolution of powers. Okay. But the thing is, we have symmetrical power sharing. We haven't given different, different uh, levels of power. I assume that is double left, if I remember it's correct. Okay. Anyways, in Sri Lanka, we don't have different levels. So we have provincial councils. We have established provincial council system. Each province has a province. And each provincial council in each province is given the same level of power. This was added to our constitution by the 13th Amendment, right? Before the 13th Amendment came, Sri Lanka was also like France. We didn't have like, we had the central government. We had the central government. And from that, directly we went to local government, like the municipal council and all that. This is how it works in France, okay? But then we also shifted to uh, devolution and we put something in between called regional governments, which is a provincial council. Okay. So powers are divided according to that Indian format. We have three lists. We have three lists. First list says powers of the provincial council. Second list says what are the powers of the central government. Third list are the concurrent or mutual powers. Okay. And we study how different Sri Lanka is from uh, the British system. Then, <clears throat> looking at France. About France, of course, a couple of things you need to know about France. First of all, 
uh, going with whatever the, in the same stream we were studying. Let's talk about it. France is unitary. Obviously, they are unitary and they haven't moved an inch from that unitary system. Although Sri Lanka and Great Britain, Sri Lanka and United Kingdom, we have moved away from this unitary format towards a little bit of uh, devolution side. But of course, uh, France, no, they are unitary and they have a very centralized government system. Okay. So, how do, how do they divide power then if they are unitary and if they don't have devolution, if there's no devolution, how do you divide power? You follow decentralization. Right? Under decentralization, now you see in Sri Lanka, follow this, follow this part very carefully, just concentrate. Think about every time your parents go out to vote, Sometimes your parents go out to vote to choose members to the central government, president and the parliament. Sometimes your parents go out to vote to choose members to the regional government, provincial council. Sometimes your parents go out to vote in the local government election to the Colombo municipal council or the urban council or whatever the council. So you can see in, in central, regional, local, every level of government in Sri Lanka, we have public representatives. We get to vote and choose those people. In France, that is not the case. In France, only in the central government, you have elected people. Okay. Then in the lowest level, of course, local government also, you have elected people. Who runs the regional level? Who runs the regional level? If someone gives the answer to this question, I will literally send them a I don't know, maybe a pack of chocolates. I will use one of those online ordering shopping apps and send me your address. I will send you a box of chocolates. Who runs the regional government in France? See, we have a question. That's a good attempt. Someone says people appointed by the central government, but that the answer is somewhat good, but it is not good enough for you to win a chocolate box. There was a particular word I was expecting. Bureau. The permanent executive. Huh? Who? Permanent executive. Ah, yes, that's correct. But uh, was it Rifki? Yes, was sir. Ah, okay. I'll, I'll send you your box of chocolates. Yes. So your answer, yeah, you are, you, are, you are qualified for a chocolate, right? So it's a bureaucracy. It's a bureaucracy. Permanent executive is the one who runs the regional level of government, right? So in the midpoint of like in the middle level of central government and local government, okay, you have a mayor, you have a president. In between, you don't have like a regional elected body. It is ran by the bureaucracy, the permanent executive of the country, public sector, okay? So this is what's happening in France. Now you see why Sri Lanka and United Kingdom had to apply. Why Sri Lanka and United Kingdom had to apply devolution of power was because of the diversity factor. I see Sri Lanka, of course, like Northern Eastern provinces have a lot of Tamil people, right? The majority of them are Tamil people. You come to this side, majority of, of us are Sinhalese people. Okay. Uh, same goes to UK because Scottish culture, Scottish people, Welsh people, Northern Irish people and English people, they are different culture wise, even starting from the accent itself, the way they talk, the way they dress, whatever they eat, it's very diverse, which is why those countries have to sort of apply devolution. But in France, it is not a problem. France is not a diverse country. Everywhere in France, they speak same language, culture is the same. They are not that diverse. It's a very... Now, of course, France has some diversity because they have taken a lot of immigrants and now you have like African nation, a lot of people in France. That's a different story. But like you take regions of France, every region, they speak the same language and it, it looks pretty much the same. Okay. So because of that, France is sort of okay with this system. They don't want devolution. Understand? They are not a large country. They are not a diverse country. So they are okay with following this typical unitary system. All right. 
Uh, other than that, you guys need to know like uh, something else that France has a mixed executive system. These like additional, it is there in the teachers guide nonetheless. Like they have a mixed, mixed executive. They have a president and a prime minister both. You know whatever we have in Sri Lanka, uh, and uh, their legislature is bicameral. So those details are also there. All right. So that's pretty much it. You need to know about these six countries. You should be able to uh, survive the MCQ questions and short questions. Within the next three uh, classes, we shall complete this unit as well. Okay. And uh, yes, that's pretty much it. Let's see, I might be able to complete uh, the three federal countries on the same day. Let's see. Okay. Right.